Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another pro revenge Reddit video. In our first story, when a new sleazy manager takes over a finely running store, it's nearly brought to ruin. Let's jump right in. I met Grumpy in Narcotics Anonymous. He volunteered there after they helped him and became my sponsor. Seeing that I was trying to get my stuff together, he offered me my first job out of high school. Grumpy was the manager of a store for a company that sold everything you needed to build a house. From cement and bricks to custom-made cupboards, I started as a loader, filling the trucks that were making deliveries. A little background for the company, it plays an important part for later. When they started back in the early 80s, they sold everything you needed to build a brick and mortar home wholesale to professionals. During their first expansion, they got a really good reputation for their prices of power tools, custom cupboards, and landscaping, including custom-made garden furniture. The stores were basically big warehouses. In the mid-90s, they opened their doors to the general public, which, accompanied by a rising tent of DIY, skyrocketed their sales. That brought a second, smaller wave of expansion and the opening of the online store first only with phone orders and later with a proper site. When I joined, they were doing a third shift of their business plan. They had cut down on things that weren't a big seller like bricks and concrete and were focusing more on the big sellers, custom made furniture, landscaping, tools, and for some weird reason, plumbing. My first eight months on the job was a dream. Grumpy was an excellent manager. Having started in the company roughly the same age I was and being promoted through the ranks, he had developed a very distinct managerial style. His concept was simple. If my employees are happy, they work better and provide better services, which leads to better sales. That meant that while Grumpy managed one of the inner city stores, meaning medium to small sized compared to others, we were fourth in revenue nationwide and first in customer happiness. And then the reason for his nickname. While everyone called him Grumpy, a nickname he was kind of proud of, he was far from it. The reason was he had a medical condition that affected his nerves and had left him with a permanent frown on his face. He had declined promotion due to that condition, knowing the extra stress would make his condition flare up, meaning he wouldn't be as effective as he would like. His medical condition flared up unexpectedly, and Grumpy had to be hospitalized and be on sick leave for a time. Headquarters decided to not have one of Grumpy's assistants be an acting manager for the duration, but brought in a regional manager to take over the store for the duration. Let's call him Wilhelm. Wilhelm was the exact opposite of Grumpy. He was younger than Grumpy, he was in his late 20s, Grumpy was in his late 30s, had a business degree, and he hadn't worked the floor at all. He was hired from the beginning as an office drone and climbed his way to regional manager. The reason he was put in charge of our store had to do with the change of the business plan of the company. You see, the change of focus had created a lot of empty space in the stores. A supermarket chain had approached the company with an offer to rent the empty space, especially for inner city stores. The company had accepted and placed regional managers in key stores to help with integration. The thing is, the supermarket chain had a reputation of being bad employers. That was reinforced by one of our tellers who had worked for them for three years before quitting to join us. Wilhelm didn't help also. His managerial style was based in only one concept, make more money in any way possible. He started by changing our schedule from monthly to weekly, raising the sales target to unrealistic heights and always demanded more. In the first two weeks, six experienced people had left, four quit and two were fired, and they were replaced by young, inexperienced people that were easier to manipulate. And then the integration happened. The floor was the first to feel the problem. The supermarket opened its doors and was understaffed. Wilhelm started sending people over to help for four to six hours while also demanding to work their regular shifts. If someone declined, he or she was written up. Two write-ups in six months and you were fired. Then Wilhelm came to lay the law in the loading bay. The loading bay was shared between the two stores. Wilhelm declared that we first had to help the two guys at the supermarket unload their trucks first because their products were perishable and then started loading our own trucks. That would throw our delivery schedule to the wind. The loading crew worked 
5 to 1 p.m. We loaded first the trucks that had longer to travel, so they will be ready to leave at 7 a.m. at the latest. The company had a next day delivery policy for 150 miles radius. What William declared meant we couldn't start loading our trucks before 7.30 and they couldn't start their route before 9.30. We said as much, but Wilhelm didn't care. He said we had to do both jobs. When someone inquired about overtime, Wilhelm said no. He said we already made too much money with unsocial hours, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., and leaving early so he wouldn't approve overtime. So, from a nice environment that you wanted to work for, we all started getting miserable. We lost 10 people in the loading crew in a month because of the new rules. The new hires didn't last long. The floor was a mess also, started turning personnel quickly. Anyone who is staying is either looking for another job, is afraid of unemployment, or is too young to know better. The sales had a very small decline, but customer happiness is plummeting fast. After almost six months, all the old guard that was left was ready to quit. But our savior came back. Almost six months from the day he was hospitalized, Grumpy walks in the store to claim his rightful position. He isn't a knight in shining armor riding a pure white horse, carrying a legendary sword. He is in normal attire, slightly limping and holding a cane. We have a welcome back party and have a small glimmer of hope now he is back. We are informed that Grumpy will be on light duties for two weeks before he becomes the manager again. Despite Grumpy being back, Wilhelm still remains the regional manager, which means he outranks Grumpy and makes it very clear in private meetings with all of us. If he caught us complaining to Grumpy, we were as good as gone. Still, a few of us are planning to have a meeting with Grumpy after the weeks, letting him get his sea legs back, but another department got to it first. During his reign of terror, the only department that Wilhelm couldn't control was the workshop. He knew that if he treated them as bad as he did us, they would quit and the sales would go from a small decline to bottom of the barrel real quick. As I said, custom-made furniture was the number one seller. So the head carpenter has a meeting with Grumpy on his second day talking about the future of the workshop. In reality, the guy spilled the beans on Wilhelm. With the pretext of catching up with the changes, Grumpy has meetings with everyone, learning what Wilhelm had done and why we had so many new staff. You could feel he was getting angrier with each meeting. He had also had an eye-opening meeting with the manager of the supermarket. Finally, the time had come that he is manager again. The Revenge On his first day back as manager, Grumpy notifies everyone of a mandatory meeting after the store is closed. He has a solution, so gather in the store after closing hours and Grumpy lays out the plan. For the next couple of days, nobody except him is coming to the store. If anyone calls us, we should direct them to him, which we did when we started getting calls about the store being closed. Grumpy's answer to headquarters was simple. The staff was working a second job during their shifts, which is a breach of contract, so I had to fire them all and find new staff. That caught headquarters' attention because nothing of the sort was reported in the past six months. They asked Grumpy for evidence, which he happily provided with our written testimonies, which brought a crap storm on Wilhelm. You see, Wilhelm had an arrangement with the supermarket manager. He got a kickback from our unpaid labor for the supermarket, and the manager offered the same thing to Grumpy. He also included that Wilhelm regularly declined to sign overtime, which meant that if any one of us went to the labor department, the company would get a really huge fine. The Aftermath Very quickly, Wilhelm was fired. We all received calls to interview with the company for an open position. We all received severance pay for our firing, plus most of the unpaid overtime, about 80% of it. Almost all of us went back to work with a small pay rise based on experience. The company took a long, hard look at the supermarket chain and distanced themselves from them. They stayed until their lease was over, but no shared employees anymore, and a lot of theirs jumped ship to our side. Next time Grumpy had to take time off, one of his assistants took over. Two did a stellar job, leading to be promoted to managers in other stores. 
Grumpy brought back his usual managerial style, leading again to a rise of sales and customer happiness. I left the job three years later for a better paying position, but I still remember Grumpy as one of the best managers I've ever had. Story 2. Bakery had my mom's car towed, so I got the business closed down permanently. This happened about 8 years ago, 2013, and when I tell people the story, I get mixed reactions, so I figure why not tell Reddit. My mom and I decided to go out to lunch one day. We drove until we found a lot that's business did not appear to be open at the time. My mom pulls into the lot and parks in a spot. We both walk over and investigate the business's window. It was a pastry shop for purposes later in the story. The lights are not on, the door is locked, and there is a sign that says closed right behind the door. We conclude they are closed and went to eat our lunch. We finish eating about a little over an hour later and come back to find out our car was missing, but now the bakery was open. My mom and I walk inside of the bakery and ask if they had seen our car. The owner, with a very stern tone and attitude, said, Yeah, I had it towed because it was taking up spots for potential customers. You should have come inside to ask me first. My mom responds that we did attempt to see if she was open and even buy something to see if we could park there for an hour or so. She calls us liars and said she had been open all day and we never attempted to ask. My mom just basically said we tried and that it was wrong for her to tow us with so many other spots available. The owner said something back to my mom that really upset her and made her cry. All while this was going on, I was taking mental notes that this bakery, pastry shop, was having ventilation and installation work being done. The insulation worker who I can only assume was a random contractor and not a specialist was doing the work right over the prep table for the food all while smoking a cigarette. As I go to console my mom, I turn around and tell the lady her sign still says closed like when we originally came to the door. She storms up to me, picks up the sign and slams it around to open. We are open now. I calm my mom down and we eventually got the car back from the tow company and got home. Once we got home, I was angry that the lady made my mom cry, so I wanted revenge. I called the health department for the city. I say exactly what I wrote above to the guy on the phone who puts me on hold and tells me to repeat everything I said word for word to his director. I tell the director the story, nothing about the car being towed obviously, I was a concerned citizen. She verifies the address and location with me three separate times. Yes, the name was X. Yes, it was across the street from this restaurant on this street. She then tells me that she shut down that business the week prior for plumbing issues insulation, and multiple other infractions. She was told she could not be open and operate a business until the plumbing issue was fixed and approved, then she told me she would handle it. Later that night on the news, that business was being shut down for good for their many infractions. I could see my mom look so confused and happy at the same time, like karma worked for her that quickly. When I told my mom what happened, she loved it. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.